Sweden, 1955. The crisp northern air carried the scent of oil and ambition. In a hidden hangar outside Linköping, engineers bent over blueprints, sketching lines that would slice through the sky faster than anything the world had seen. This was Saab, Sweden's crown jewel of aviation innovation. Their mission was clear. Develop a supersonic interceptor capable of defending a neutral nation in a world dominated by superpowers. The Saab 35 Draken would be the answer. Sleek, audacious, and revolutionary. Outside, the first prototype gleamed under the winter sun. Its double-delta wing design wasn't just for show. It was a calculated move to balance speed, agility, and stability at Mach 2. The engineers held their breath. Every bolt, every rivet, every curve had been calculated to perfection. This jet will rewrite air combat, one whispered. Captain Lars Svensson, one of Sweden's top test pilots, approached the aircraft. He ran his hands along the fuselage, feeling the cold metal hum with potential energy. Flying this will be like touching the edge of tomorrow, he muttered. The runway stretched ahead, frozen in ice and anticipation. The Draken's engine roared to life, a deep, resonant sound that vibrated through the hangar and surrounding forests. Ground crews stepped back instinctively. This was not just a test flight. It was a statement of Swedish ingenuity. Lars climbed into the cockpit, helmet secured, instruments glowing faintly. All systems nominal, he reported over the comms. He adjusted the throttle, feeling the raw power at his fingertip. The jet surged forward, tires gripping the icy runway as it accelerated past 300, then 500 kilometers per hour. Snow whipped across the tarmac, clouds reflecting the metallic shimmer of the Draken's wings. In a heartbeat, it lifted, a precise, elegant ascent into the pale winter sky. Above Linköping, the jet danced. The double delta wings allowed it to maneuver like a predator, banking sharply, then diving with uncanny stability. The instruments beeped warnings, but Lars ignored them. This was supersonic freedom, raw and unrestrained. On the ground, engineers monitored every parameter, lift, drag, engine temperature. Every reading was perfect, and yet, beneath their pride, a subtle tension lingered. This jet was faster than any Swedish pilot had flown, more agile than any enemy expected, and every flight carried a risk that could be fatal. Lars pushed the Draken higher, nearing Mach 1.1 for the first real supersonic run. The air around the fuselage shimmered, compressing into a visible heat distortion. He felt a momentary jolt, the infamous sound barrier, and then silence. The jet had sliced through the sky effortlessly. We did it, Lars whispered into his headset, exhilaration vibrating in his voice. Yet, in that triumph lay the seeds of tension. The Draken wasn't just a jet. It was a symbol of Sweden's delicate position in the Cold War. Every radar blip, every foreign reconnaissance satellite would notice it, and every decision from this point onward could trigger international attention. As Lars prepared to return to the base, a radar blip appeared on his instruments. It wasn't Swedish. It wasn't friendly. Unknown aircraft approaching, high speed, bearing 045, the comms crackled. Lars tightened his grip on the controls. Above the frozen forests of Sweden, the Draken faced its first test against the unknown, and the skies were about to grow even more dangerous. The radar blip grew closer, cutting through the icy northern air like a shadow across the screen. Captain Lars Svensson's heart quickened. He knew this was no routine flight. Sweden's neutrality in the Cold War had been tested before, but this, this felt different. Unknown aircraft approaching. Altitude 12,000 meters. Speed exceeding expectations. Lars adjusted the throttle, feeling the Draken respond instantly. The jet was agile, its double delta wings slicing the air with a predator's precision. Every instrument flickered, every sensor hummed. The Draken had been built for speed and agility, but now it faced the unknown, an intruder in Swedish airspace that could be hostile. Below, snow-covered forests stretched endlessly. From a ground control station, 
engineers and radar operators tracked every maneuver. The data streamed in high resolution, altitude, speed, heading, yet uncertainty lingered. Who was this aircraft? American reconnaissance? Soviet incursion? Or something else entirely? Lars activated the Draken's radar-guided systems, locking onto the approaching blip. Maintain safe intercept distance. No aggressive maneuvers unless necessary, the comms ordered. The unknown jet didn't slow. It zipped across the horizon like a phantom. Lars banked sharply, the Draken responding with near-perfect stability. He felt the familiar thrill of supersonic flight, adrenaline coursing, every muscle tensed. Meanwhile, engineers monitored the Draken's performance. Every control surface, engine output, and wing flex was analyzed in real time. The jet's handling beyond expectations, one murmured. It's designed for interception, but this, this is the first real test. Outside, the intruding aircraft revealed itself, a high-altitude reconnaissance jet, sleek, foreign, and fast. Its markings were unfamiliar, a blurred insignia that hinted at Cold War ambiguity. Lars knew he had seconds to react before crossing into international tension territory. The Draken surged forward, acceleration smooth yet terrifying. Radar systems tracked, instruments beeping warnings of proximity and speed. Inside the cockpit, Lars' fingers danced over controls. All eyes on me, Jet. We fly clean, precise, no mistakes. The unknown aircraft zigzagged, testing the Draken's capabilities. Lars pushed the throttle further. Mach 1.2. Mach 1.3. The jet was responding perfectly, almost anticipating his maneuvers, every adjustment precise, every turn calculated. Passengers, or in this case, test observers in the back cockpit, gripped the harnesses. They could feel the force of supersonic maneuvers, the raw power of the Draken bending physics itself. This is incredible whispered one observer. I've never seen anything like it. Suddenly, the unknown aircraft shifted altitude, disappearing into clouds. Radar picked it up intermittently, creating a tense game of cat and mouse above Swedish airspace. Ground operators held their breath, monitoring every second. Sweden's Draken, a supersonic marvel, was proving itself not just as a jet, but as a guardian of neutrality. Lars followed cautiously, maneuvering through icy clouds, feeling the jet's full potential. It's alive, it's reading the sky better than I am, he muttered, awe in his voice. The intruder reappeared suddenly, flanking the Draken at an impossible angle. Warning, unknown aircraft closing rapidly. Possible engagement required, the HUD blared. Lars tightened his grip. For the first time, the Draken's legendary speed and agility would be tested against another high-speed jet in real Cold War skies. The frozen forests below seemed to vanish as two silhouettes streaked across the horizon, and the first true aerial duel in Sweden's supersonic legacy was about to begin. Decades passed. The Cold War faded, but Sweden's skies remained vigilant. From the frozen forests of Linköping to the open waters of the Baltic, the nation's commitment to air superiority never wavered. Enter the Saab JAS-39 Gripen, a modern fighter born from lessons learned with the Draken and Vigan. Sleek, nimble, and supersonic, the Gripen combined cutting-edge avionics, lightweight composite materials, and multi-role capabilities. It wasn't just a jet. It was a statement of Swedish innovation in a new era. Captain Eric Lindholm adjusted his helmet in the cockpit of the Gripen E. HUD flickering, sensors alive, he glanced at the display. All systems nominal, but we're pushing the envelope today, he muttered. The sun glinted off the jet's fuselage as it roared down the runway. Within seconds, Eric felt the familiar pull of acceleration. Mach 1.4. Mach 1.6. The Gripen responded instantly to every throttle adjustment, every subtle twist of the stick. It was fast, precise, and almost alive, a far cry from the Draken's analog route. High above the Baltic Sea, a training scenario unfolded. 
2. Gripen ES faced off against advanced drones simulating modern threat. Eric's eyes darted between HUD markers, radar blips, and airspeed indicators. Engage defensive systems. Threat vector incoming at 45 degrees. The comm crackled. The Gripen's AI assisted systems calculated angles, trajectories, and optimal countermeasures faster than any human could. It wasn't cheating, it was evolution, human skill augmented by cutting edge technology. Below, naval observers tracked the maneuvers, jaws dropped. The Gripen darted through clouds, banking sharply, executing evasive maneuvers with near impossible precision. Simulated missiles fired, radar locked, and the jet responded seamlessly, dodging each virtual threat as if predicting its path. Eric couldn't help but grin. We've come a long way from the Draken, he muttered, voice tight with excitement. Indeed, Sweden's supersonic lineage was clear. From double delta wings to adaptive avionics, each generation refined lessons from the last, pushing speed, survivability, and tactical advantage to new height. Yet, with innovation came tension. The Gripen's new AI systems could override pilot input in emergencies. Its stealth capabilities allowed undetectable operations, but also demanded absolute trust from its operator. One wrong move, one misread signal, and even a supersonic marvel could be grounded or worse. Eric's cockpit lit up with an alert. Simulated threat approaching, multiple vectors detected. He pushed the Gripen to the limit. Engine output surged, wing flaps adjusted, and the jet cut through the Baltic's turbulent air like a predator. Every maneuver tested the synergy of human instinct and machine precision. Suddenly, radar picked up an unidentified aircraft entering Swedish airspace. Not a drone. Not part of the exercise. Eric's heart raced. Unknown vector closing fast. This is real. In that instant, Sweden's Gripen legacy, from the Draken to this modern marvel, faced its first true airborne test in the 21st century. The sky, vast and indifferent, awaited. And above it all, the Gripen surged forward, faster, sharper, and smarter than anything the Cold War had ever seen. The Gripen E roared above the Baltic, slicing through clouds at Mach 1.5. Captain Eric Lindholm's eyes flicked between the HUD and the radar display. There it was, an unknown aircraft moving at speeds that rivaled his own. No markings. No communication. Only a shadow racing across Swedish airspace. Unknown vector, closing fast, prepare for intercept. The calm crackled. Eric's hands tightened on the throttle. The Gripen surged forward, adaptive AI systems coordinating every maneuver in real time. The jet responded almost before he thought, banking sharply, adjusting flaps, tilting nose, a dance of metal and air. The intruder zigzagged, testing Sweden's latest supersonic marvel. Eric's pulse quickened. It's fast, but we're faster, he muttered, adrenaline sharpening every sense. Below, the Baltic shimmered in the afternoon sun, calm and unaware of the aerial ballet above. Engine hum, wind rush, and the subtle vibration of supersonic flight filled the cockpit. Every second counted. One miscalculation, a collision, a diplomatic incident, disaster. Radar confirmed it. The unknown aircraft was armed, simulated missiles in the exercise, but real risk in its speed and unpredictability. The Gripen's AI calculated trajectories, predicted evasive patterns, and suggested optimal intercept maneuvers. Eric trusted it implicitly, feeling the jet anticipate his instincts like a second mind. We fly clean. Precision. No mistakes, Eric whispered. The jets danced across the horizon. Cloud cover, sun glare, and shifting winds became allies and enemies simultaneously. The unknown craft tried to evade, but the Gripen's advanced radar locked on, tracking every micromovement. On the ground, engineers monitored telemetry with awe. This is beyond training. The jet is outperforming simulations. Every roll, dive, and thrust vector was recorded. Every microsecond, every calculation, pushing Sweden's supersonic legacy to its limit. Eric executed a sharp climb, 
breaking through a turbulent pocket. The unknown aircraft mirrored him, fast, agile, threatening. Yet, the Gripen maintained perfect stability, its AI balancing physics, aerodynamics, and human input seamlessly. Passengers were far below, military observers strapped into rear cockpits, witnessing the full power of modern Swedish engineering. Whispers of awe spread as the jets twisted and surged above the Baltic, speed blurring the horizon. Suddenly, the intruder broke formation, descending rapidly toward Eric's path. HUD flashed collision risk. Immediate evasive action required. Eric's heartbeat thundered. He pushed the Gripen's limits, banking, accelerating, diving, every calculation perfect, every movement razor-sharp. The unknown aircraft vanished into clouds, leaving Eric panting, engines screaming, adrenaline coursing. For a moment, silence reigned. The Baltic below seemed peaceful, but the tension lingered. Sweden's Gripen had survived its first real high-speed confrontation, but the sky had proven one truth. Supersonic flight was beautiful, but unforgiving. The Gripen E descended toward the base, engines humming with residual power. Captain Eric Lindholm exhaled slowly, letting the tension ebb. Above the Baltic, the horizon stretched endless and indifferent, yet he knew Sweden's skies had been guarded, tested, and defended, from the Draken to this modern marvel. Systems nominal returning to base, Eric reported, voice calm but still charged. Ground control exhaled in relief. Telemetry confirmed a flawless mission. Every maneuver, every split-second decision had worked perfectly. The Gripen wasn't just a jet. It was a culmination of decades of Swedish innovation, embodying lessons learned from Cold War interceptors and modern technology. Inside the cockpit, Eric reflected on the lineage of Swedish aviation. From Lars Svensson's Draken slicing through 1950s skies to Viggen interceptors maintaining neutrality in tense waters, and now the Gripen E's AI-assisted precision, every generation had pushed boundaries. Sweden had remained a small nation, but in airspace, it demanded respect. The runway grew closer, the base alive with engineers, technicians, and observers. Each step of the Gripen's descent highlighted the delicate balance of human skill and advanced technology. Every instrument, every flap, every throttle adjustment spoke of innovation honed through decades. Outside, the late afternoon sun glinted off the Gripen's titanium fuselage. Observers snapped photos, cameras capturing reflections of the sea, the clouds, and the sleek lines of the jet, a symbol of precision and pride. The landing was textbook perfect. Tires kissed the tarmac, engines adjusted, and the jet rolled to a smooth stop. Eric removed his helmet, letting the adrenaline fade, replaced by quiet satisfaction. We've flown faster, higher, smarter, but the sky still commands respect, he whispered. The Gripen's success was not merely technical, it was symbolic. It showed that even a nation of modest size could design, innovate, and execute at the highest levels of aviation. From supersonic pioneers to AI-enhanced jets, Sweden had continually reinvented the rules of air combat and defense. Engineers gathered around, analyzing data and telemetry. Every maneuver of the Gripen, every reaction to the unknown aircraft, would inform future designs, shaping the next generation of Swedish aviation. It was the same spirit that drove the Draken decades earlier, courage, innovation, and relentless pursuit of excellence. Pilots and engineers exchanged glances, pride and awe written on every face. We're ready for the future, Eric said quietly. And indeed, the future loomed. Concept sketches for stealth-capable fifth-generation fighters adorned the walls. Sweden's journey in the sky was far from over. Every lesson, every supersonic flight, built the foundation for what would come next. As the Gripen rested on the tarmac, Eric gazed toward the open horizon. We've defended the skies, mastered speed, and tamed machines, but the sky itself remains untouchable. Above Sweden, clouds swirled, indifferent to human innovation. And the nation understood. Supersonic flight, history, and legacy are never complete, 
they are always reaching higher, faster, and beyond.